Have you ever wondered why heart attack deaths have increased so much in recent years? Why do strokes increase more every year? Why is there more and more cancer? Why does this happen when we supposedly have more and more technology, eat better, and exercise more? There is an ingredient that has taken over our breakfasts, lunches, meals, and desserts. It took over sweet and savory food. It's in the sauces we use, the products we buy at the store, at hot dog stands, and even in the most elegant restaurants. It's a silent ingredient. We rarely know if it is used because it has little smell and taste. This killer ingredient is vegetable oil, an invention of the 19th century that was born with industrialization, an ultra-processed food that is not natural. The marketing behind vegetable oil took care of demonizing other types of oils in ending their competition and filling the pockets of those few who discovered how to produce. The elites manipulated the information given to doctors and nutritionists, the information taught in medical schools, just so that at the time, this type of oil was the most recommended by doctors. This in order to increase their sales to astronomical levels. We were brainwashed to believe that vegetable oil, the one that comes from sunflower, canola, soy, cotton, and corn, is the one we humans should consume to be healthy. This misinformation is largely responsible for the great abundance of diseases that exist today. They demonize the saturated fat that naturally comes from the cow, the one we find in butter, as if it were nature's worst invention. Saturated fat is found abundantly in milk that all mammals produce, and it's necessary for a little calf to become an untamable bull. There is even plenty of saturated fat in breast milk and, if it were so bad, we would see more infants with heart and brain attacks. But this is not the case. My intention with this short documentary, it's not about telling you to never eat fried chicken in your life again, because we all know it's delicious. And as they say, once a year, it doesn't hurt. What I mean is that ignoring the chemical compounds these oils contain will increase your risk of death from cerebrovascular heart attack, cancer, and it will increase inflammation in your body. Each of the dishes you eat in a day has this ingredient, even if you don't know it. Stick around until the end, because I'm going to give you a guide on how to avoid these foods, how to consume healthy oils, and I'm going to tell you which type of oil is the best for your health. Vegetable oil is the biggest poison of modern nutrition, and we need to do something about it. The three main causes of mortality worldwide are cardiovascular disease, cancer, and accidents in general. The first two account for almost 80% of the causes of death worldwide. Since the 90s, the causes of death from cardiovascular disease and cancer are alarmingly increasing. But what happened in the 90s? It was here that deaths from heart disease alarmingly increased. It was in 1992 when the famous nutrition pyramid was created. The United States Department of Agriculture created the Food Pyramid in 1992. They placed the cereals at the base of the pyramid and the vegetables and fruits at the next larger level. These were the foods that were supposed to make up most of our diet. The next level was divided, dairy to the left and proteins to the right. The tip of the pyramid was reserved for fats and sweets. What they didn't consider is that by recommending carbohydrates at the base of the pyramid, that is the largest and most important, with cereals and fruits, they were doing major damage. Today we know that excessive carbohydrates are the second biggest poison we consume daily. Moreover, the oils that would be industrially used to prepare these cereals are mainly vegetable oils. But what is the origin of the use of vegetable oils? And where does the hatred towards the saturated fat from butter come from? Until the late 19th century, nobody cared much about cotton seeds. There was demand for cotton fiber and the useless seeds were thrown in the trash. But around the turn of the century, the company Procter & Gamble perceived a business opportunity and began to incorporate cheap cottonseed oil into their products. This effort culminated in the launch in 1911 of Crisco, a vegetable shortening that is now known to be supremely inflammatory and harmful. It has a high content of trans fats. Over the next 30 years, 
cottonseed oil replaced pork lard in many recipes. It became the king of vegetable oils. However, during the Second World War, this oil was disappearing, and soy oil was taking market share. Why? Simply because soy oil was cheaper. In the 1950s, vegetable oils were somewhat popular, but thanks to a doctor named Ansel Keys, they were about to become much more popular. This is because, in 1955, Keyes revealed his theory that saturated fats caused heart diseases. It wasn't based on good science, but still, his theory gained unstoppable strength. The American Heart Association began recommending that people replace saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats. Soon, vegetable oils were considered heart healthy, while saturated fats such as pork fat, coconut oil, palm oil, and eggs. They became synonymous with heart diseases. The world's most famous magazines were spreading the message. An unstoppable snowball of false information was generated. Since then, dozens of important articles have been published, created by renowned nutrition experts, which have largely concluded that saturated fats do not have significant effects on cardiovascular diseases, cardiovascular mortality, or total mortality. The current challenge is that this new consensus on saturated fats be recognized by policymakers who, in the United States, have shown marked resistance to the introduction of new evidence. This makes us wonder if there are economic interests behind all this. The conspiracy against saturated fats is truly interesting and deserves its own documentary, but in this one, we're going to focus on vegetable oils. If you're interested in a full documentary about the great conspiracy and hidden interests in dismissing saturated fats, let me know in the comments section. We should avoid vegetable oils because they are high in artificial trans fats created through a hydrogenation process. This process is used to solidify oils that are usually liquid at room temperature. This improves the stability of shelf life to food products. Trans fats increase LDL cholesterol, known as bad cholesterol, and reduce HDL or good cholesterol. This increases the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Even though many countries have taken steps to limit or ban the use of artificial trans fats, they can still be found in processed foods that use partially hydrogenated oils. These oils also cause an imbalance of omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. Vegetable oils tend to be rich in omega-6 fatty acids, while the consumption of omega-3, found abundantly in fatty fish, for example, is generally lower in our Western diets. That is, we eat a lot of omega-6 and little omega-3. Both are essential, but an excess of omega-6 promotes inflammation, which is associated with an increased risk of chronic diseases. As if that wasn't enough, polyunsaturated vegetable oils are susceptible to oxidation, both during processing, like when cooking at high temperatures. Oxidation products include potentially toxic compounds that can contribute to oxidative stress and inflammation in the body. This happens mainly when oil is reused, as it is rarely changed in fast food establishments, since it is rarely changed in fast food establishments. The best sources of fat you can consume are ghee, fat from butter, olive oil, and avocado fat. These fats are good for the heart, and their resistance to oxidation is supremely high compared to vegetable fat. If you can, try to use olive oil for cooking. If you're going to add fat to your food, try ghee. And if you want a good source of fat in the form of fruit, there's no better option for your heart than avocado. I'd love to make a full documentary about the healthiest types of fat for our bodies. It would be truly interesting. If we get a thousand comments, I get down to work. Remember to give a like and share if you learned something new. If you want to learn how to create content, like what you just saw in this video, and make a living from YouTube, I'm leaving a free class in the description section and the first comment of this video. Remember we also have a channel for kids. There we seek to nurture our youth with transformative messages that lead them to become better people and healthier children. We also have Tuvi in different languages, among them Spanish.
Portuguese, Swedish, German, and French. Find these channels in the recommended section on my main channel. Next, you'll see two videos that are of interest to you. I send you a hug. See you in the next one.